TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you miss it and you want to catch the previous lives or be ready for the next live, there it is down there. That's twitch.com. Type in that name. You get me. Um, and lock in. Don't forget we got Patreon. We do five days a week. That's where we post exclusive Patreon content that cannot be posted to YouTube. Anything that we thought could get posted to YouTube but turns out it couldn't goes on there. And the stuff that we watch on Twitch that go, can't go on YouTube, it also goes on there, man. So there's a there's a lot of content. I post just as much there as I post here. Only difference is you got to pay a little bit, but, you know, it's all right. Don't forget, we got merch, too, as well, man. This is Talk TV. I'm not subscribed. I will sub up, though, you know. Hit that like button before we even... Get into it, but this is let's get into it, man. This is the most dangerous place in Britain. You can get stabbed by walking anywhere. Hmm. Okay. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. And as you can tell, I'm here for uh, teaching purposes, learning purposes. <laughs> How bad's crime in the... Is there an intro for this? Yep, there we go. Middlesbrough, North East England, okay. We're in Middlesbrough, the biggest town right in the heart of Cleveland and the UK's epicenter for criminal activity. New statistics show the rate of recorded crime across Cleveland police stands at 141.7 per thousand people. That means over 14% of those here were the victim of crime in the last year. To put that into context, that's nearly 40% higher than London's Metropolitan Police hey. and over 50% above the rate for England and Wales. And when you look closer, it's an even grimmer picture. The area has the highest rate of sexual offences in the country, the second highest rate of knife crime and the fourth worst rate for drug offences. On the ground here, you get an immediate... What is going on in Cleveland, Middlesbrough? I ain't even gonna lie, like when they first panned in, it looked terrible. This, this looked like somewhere in America, somewhere like an American hood. ...sense of the huge challenges facing Cleveland. We were threatened by multiple people in broad daylight, and on the Hemlington estate in Middlesbrough, it didn't take long until crime came to us. I need to walk about one of these, man, look. It's what you need to walk about with to keep yourself safe, man. So you've got to constantly walk around with a knife? Constantly walking about with a knife, mate, just to keep myself safe. Because I could be walking down any alley, someone will come round and stab me, do you know what I mean? Do you have a knife as well? I'm not. He doesn't because he's with me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, I don't need knives. Do you know what I mean? Do you, have you ever had to use a knife? Plenty of times, mate. I'm not proud of it, like, but plenty of times. And what, like, what situations have you had to use it? Well, just where people think they're badder than me, do you know what I mean? Trying to give me smoke. And obviously, I'm not just going to sit there and let it happen. I'm, I'm going to retaliate, do you know what I mean? So it's just the same. If I see them, I'm doing the same thing to them, do you know what I mean? So I've stabbed about 20 people, man. I swear. And so you still think that's all right to do? Well, it depends. If, obviously, I'm not just going to go about doing it. We'll see how bad this video gets. It might have to get edited, but I haven't seen nothing that violates YouTube's guidelines thus far. To anyone, obviously, if someone's going to do it to me, if I see them without them seeing me, I'm sneaking up on them and doing them in straight away. Not a problem. So what are you doing now? Just out chilling, you know what I'm doing, man. What do you mean? Like, do you deal or not? Yeah. The brazenness of this encounter came as a shock. And once off camera, this man told us he doesn't sell the drugs himself, but has children running them for him. 
This kind of operation is not unusual, and now with technology, it's easier than ever for criminals to target youngsters. Yes, I will be editing this video. <laughs> I thought I would. Crime isn't just limited to the streets anymore. Increasingly, it's online. And within a few minutes, I was able to find drug dealers based in Middlesbrough advertising their products on popular social media sites. It's not just illicit drugs that they're selling. They say that within the touch of a button, anyone can buy guns, knives. They say that within the touch of a button, anyone can buy guns, knives, prescription medication, counterfeit money, and cloned credit cards. But some locals are fighting back. Paul Harris and Davy Leopard oh, that's crazy. have lived on Middlesbrough's Grove Hill estate their whole lives. They were fed up with seeing kids sucked into a life of crime and set up the You Can project to help keep children off the streets. To the Fortnite, huh? Most of our friends have gone prison, they've died. Paul Harris. Suicides. It's just, it's not the same as it used to be around here, so it's all changing. Yeah, drugs has got a big part of it, but it's everywhere, isn't it? So for me now, as all I'm thinking is give these kids a better chance. Don't go down the path we've took. Go down this path and get yourselves a trade, a job, you know, have a better future, better plans, instead of ending up being drug dealers. So no, there's 100% right. There's no future in drug dealing. Let me tell you, you got to be an amazing, saving person and be way so under the radar for it to even, like, you know what I'm saying? Go, just go get a job. <laughs> What's the younger sort of drug? You'll save more money with a job. Now, let me, let me clear up. You'll save more money having a job than you will trapping, but you'll have more money on hand when you trap them. But it, it's a little revolving door. It's gone. You, there's no way you can save it. Go ahead and get you a nine to five. Drug dealer that you've seen around this area? <sighs> Without exaggerating, I'd say I'd stick with a 12 year old. Dealing drugs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's common, that. You're looking at me like it's just it's a shock. Okay. It's common. But why do you think all these stabbings not go on? It's all down to drugs and money and reputation. These days, the kids, if he's in our state, we're going to do them in. This place now is the kids just know it to you. Their work is certainly proving popular for those involved. I absolutely love it. There's stuff for our kids to do. There's Fortnite and there's football at the back and then there's pool tables and there's air hockey and there's this football. I think it's good for our kids, get them off the street. Why is it so important for you? Because instead of playing out on like the streets and stuff, you get to play in a, um, a protected centre. Do you want to, do you like hot dogs? Yeah. Do you want a hot dog? Alfie's mum Donna is one of the grateful parents who volunteer here every week, running arts and crafts, cooking hot food, and even manning the tuck shop. Hot dogs in a slow cooker? But with the local council facing the threat of bankruptcy, the centre's future hangs in the balance. If they didn't have this, what would happen? Where would they be? Donna Peacock. What would they be up to? Not, can't speak for all of them, but on the streets. Yeah, little little places like these, like youth centers, if you can get to the child early enough, they, they make a difference. Because, like I say, man, children are the future, and if you stop it at, if you stop it early enough, they ain't gonna do it. Probably tormenting neighbors, fighting on the streets. They'll be playing out in the dark, in the cold. Nothing for them to do, really. You know, I'm, as a parent myself, I'll speak for myself. <laughs> go on then, go and play out if you want to go and play out. But then we worry where our kids are the safe. It's a sad reality that crime feels like a part of everyday life to some people here. Just something they have to put up with and accept. That's how I felt when I was in, the, in Chicago. I was so, I was so tuned off to crime. Like, oh, okay. Like literally, like I would sit there on, it's an app called, um, what's it called? Citizens app. I would sit on the Citizens app for entertainment and just look at it like, ah. Oh. Dang, they getting busy. Dang. Like, I would literally do that. Like, Citizens app in Florida, like, they might as well not have this app. Like, don't nothing be happening out here. Like. I don't feel safe at all. I wouldn't dream of going out after after dark. 
prostitutes, drug addicts, the houses being broken into, no police presence. It's uh, quite horrifying, really. It's horrible. I come, I, I, I come with my partner, Paul, um, did my safety. I've had some very dodgy experiences in the middle of the night. It's usually quite a lot of drugs, and when drugs are about and they're not legalised, there's an awful lot of crime. Absolutely shocking. Like, I lived on Cannon Park, I lived in uh, Carlo Street, and every place I've lived, I've been bagged. Come mm. four o'clock, soon as it starts getting dusk, uh, I'm back in the house, because I don't trust the town no more. And stories like this are all too common. Theft offences are... Look at this terrible quality of life. you got to be in the house by 4 p.m. And for the second biggest crime group in Cleveland, while shoplifting is worse here than anywhere else. Shoplifting has increased across England and Wales over the last two years, and the North East is the worst affected area in the country, with offences up by a third. Some retailers in Cleveland have had to install panic alarms for staff, and one shopkeeper in Middlesbrough has gone even further. I just take the phone away every night because uh, it will lease if anybody coming. Uh, for Bagley, at least they know stealing the phone because phone is not displayed. Harvez Akhtar runs a phone shop on the town's notorious Parliament Road, but he's been targeted so heavily by thieves, he's had to resort to extreme measures. How many times were you burglars? Burglars about, I think, about uh, nine times. <clears throat> First three years, seven times. Damn. So what I do now, I just protect myself with the razor wire. Razor wire here on the main 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 entrance. If anybody hit with their car or lorries, I just cover myself to nobody coming in. Then if anybody come through the roof or anybody just uh, uh, caught the, my wall coming inside or something like that, I protect from every single corner. Wow. Yeah you know I mean because I can't take the risk. Once what's happened the guy coming in, take the phone from me okay. and run away. After three days later, same guy with other three friends come to outside my shop. They just call me, come outside, I want to talk to you. I just go out. He said, you want to buy this phone? My phone, stick it on. <laughs> they, they brazen. So they robbed you for a phone, came back and tried to sell it back to you? Surprise on. With the sticker still on it? Everything. Pinch from my shop three days before. He wanted to sell me. And they said to me, I know you clever guy. Don't tell the police. We know where you live. I'm scared. I'm scared. What's causing all of these burglaries? Prostitutes is making the problem because they, they just uh, get the money for drugs. And this area, is most of them, most of them, druggies. Prostitutes outside my house. I said to them, I don't mind you do whatever you want to do. It's your business. But don't do outside my house because my kids are outside my house. My kids listening from the windows what they're talking about. People ask them, how much you charge for the blow job? My daughter, 11 years old, she asked me, Dad, what is the mean blow job? <laughs> what I give them an answer. Just moments later, we saw firsthand what, what he was on his door. Yeah, what do you tell her? Like, do you tell your Stay. kid the truth? Or... Hell no, nah, I'm lying. I'm making something up. 11, that's too early. Multiple sex workers lining this residential street not long after kids had left school for the day. Prostitution was also visible in broad daylight. But these women are themselves at risk. Just last year, Cleveland police said they'd helped 40 local sex workers in a campaign to reduce harm against them. Violent crime is Cleveland's biggest problem, and knife crime is at the heart of it. With multiple stabbings now a daily occurrence across England, we wanted to meet the people behind the statistics. We've spoken to three people whose lives have been changed forever. A victim, a perpetrator, and a bereaved mother. When I got up, blood was just showing everywhere I thought. I'm dead and I just said, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, like that. And I thought that was it. In Thornaby on Tees, we meet Gary Gill. 
Two years ago, on this very spot, he was targeted by three men in a brutal attack. Bang, bang, bang on the door. For, oh my God. Yeah. You can see they've all got knives, making it clear, like, this is what we came for. I said, put the weapons down and I'll fight yous. I'll fight yous all, you idiots. And so they pretended to put the weapon. That wasn't the right, you should have ran or something. Down and then moved around the back of me. So one of them's come towards me and I thought, great, you're in my world. <laughs> so I've punched him and his eyes have rolled. And then, and I've went to like move towards him again. Then I felt stab, stab from behind. Uh, yeah, once you hit dude, let me tell you how it went. They played it like, all right, man, maybe we can take him. Once you hit that first one and, and his buddy seen his eyes roll, he was, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> that's really what, that's really what, and that's unfortunate. But this is why you're trying to paint this picture for y'all in Chicago. If somebody run up on you and, and they and they talking crazy to you, and, oh, meet me here, let's do the fist fight, let's do the fist, it's cap. They're not fist fight, nobody's fist fighting. Don't do it. Just either leave it alone or, or just don't do it. <laughs> and I'm trying to um, get myself out, get myself out, and then stab. Uh, st stab again, I've been stabbing my leg, and I've went like, oh shit, and I've got, got like, end ended up on the floor. And I thought, just cover yourself up, just cover yourself up. And they were just booting me and stamping on me, and I got stabbed a couple more times. And in those two years since that's happened, do you think knife crime's getting better in this? 14 year old son has been arrested recently carrying a knife. Now, I asked him, why, why are you carrying a knife, son? And he said, Dad, well, I've got problems and people are fought. Yeah, nobody fights anymore. It's over. So he's literally armed himself with a knife as a normality um, because he knows that other people are going to be carrying him. It seems knife crime follows Gary around. That evening, we speak to the brother of his partner. Andrew spent 14 years behind bars for almost stabbing someone to death. This is the I brother just, uh, of... went out on my own, on a Madden. I used to I used to carry a knife to protect myself. Uh, basically, I've walked up and asked a man for a cigarette, and he told me no. So I asked him for all his money, and he started fighting with me. So, so um, unfortunately, he got stabbed up eleven times, and obviously I ran away and I found out that he that he almost died. How much do you regret your actions? Oh, mate, I 100% I want, I regret my actions. I wish it never happened. However, I feel that the sentence I got was justified and it completely yeah, 14 turned my years. life round. What's your advice to anybody thinking of picking up a knife? Don't do it because you're f stupid. Sorry for the language, you're absolutely stupid. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's peer pressure at the end of the day. There's a lot of kids who are walking about with knives who probably don't want to. But they're there with the pals and it's peer pressure. Like, That's a fact too. That's the same in Chicago. There's a lot of people who are in Chicago walking around with firearms that don't want to walk around with firearms, but they, ha they have to because of situations they've seen, heard, or been in themselves that they never want to be in again. It's 100%. On the money. Don't pick a knife up, don't be pressured into doing something that you don't want to do. While Andrew seems remorseful, he now has the opportunity to change his life for the better. But not everyone is so lucky. Enlisted is the free brand new... Yeah, his reasoning though, like... Dude, he needed to go to jail. No, I don't wish jail on nobody, but like, that's a crazy reasoning. Yeah, I asked for a cigarette, he wouldn't give me one, so I asked for all his money. And then he started beating me up, which he, which made sense, and I just couldn't take it. That's crazy. Andrew seems remorseful. He now has the opportunity to change his life for the better. But not everyone is so lucky. It had cut through his windpipe and the blood was just coming oh. out. And there's an awful lot of blood there. Yeah. Barbara's son, Robert, was murdered just metres from his home when he was stabbed in the back with an ornamental samurai sword in 2003. Her tireless campaigning led to similar replica weapons being banned, but over 20 years on, the wounds of that day have never fully healed. Was good. The sword um, Welcome. went through his windpipe. 
went through the left chamber of his heart, cut through a vertebrae in his back, <clears throat> then he went through the main aorta. I see a tube coming up to your heart, isn't it? He bled profusively in the street. That, that what I've just shown you was his blood. Can you imagine how I felt looking at that? I got to the hospital. I, I, I was hysterical, literally hysterical. I rang up first because I got a phone call. Um, his partner had said he's gone. So I said, gone where? Because I didn't know what had happened. Um, and I, so I rang back, I thought, what's going on here? And the, I was told by a receptionist that he had been discharged and he was on his way home. Then I got the phone call of his partner to say he's gone. So I rang my dad. I was, I was pacing. I walked that floor in my house for years, up and down, up and down, um, with the agitation and the horror of it. Um, I got to the hospital and I screamed right from the entrance. This was the general. And I said to the receptionist, you told me he was on his way home and he's laid on a slab out there dead. Um, people say, oh, well, you should have closure now. Closure? What closure? Right. You, what, what, what do they mean, closure? Because I don't know. There is no closure. It goes on and on and on. That person was here that day because his father spoke to him on the phone. A couple of hours later, he was dead. You can't get closure over that. It's human stories like Barbara's that lay bare the challenges weighing heavy on the local community. But how do you bring about meaningful change? Whether it's violence, antisocial behaviour, theft or more, every person we spoke to said it all links back to drugs. How bad drugs in the area? Drugs, right. <laughs> yeah, it should be I'll called drugs, man. Could be called drugs. Crack city. Crack city. Smack city. Swear. I know a lot of kids who were 14, 15, 16 who were smoking crack, yeah. Smoking crack okay now before they're 16 years old. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's I'm not even that's not I'm not even exaggerating. That's insane. People like my high school, yeah, I remember I was an athlete, so I ain't partaking in nothing. <sighs> years later I found out everybody in my high school, I'm talking freshman year, eighth grade, uh <laughs> sophomore, they was all doing booger sugar and I was like I can't believe it <laughs> we was children y'all ain't had nothing better to do mate, mate, that, that's how bad it's getting at the moment that crack is it's took over it's a pandemic with crack who's doing the robbing just just druggies so it's all drugs all drugs it's every state I went I can, I can guarantee I'd spot a drug dealer even a working class they, they all do it it's not, it's not just low-class people, it's everywhere. Facts. References to drugs are everywhere here, with rows and rows of boarded-up buildings raided by police and the names of anyone who's snitched plastered on walls for all to see. Cleveland police are trying to crack down on drugs in a series of specialist operations to root out gangs, but the sheer scale of the problem here is shocking. Just days before we arrived, a huge cannabis grow was raided at this former Middlesbrough pub. And while we were out filming, we heard of an even bigger discovery. The what? police face an ongoing battle with trying to control drugs in this area. As soon as they arrest somebody for growing drugs, another place will pop up to replace it. We've heard that Cleveland police has raided a property in Hartlepool this morning and found 200,000 pounds worth of cannabis plants. Damn. So we're going down there to take a look. I don't think class B's have to be edited out, but. Cause you can smell it coming from the door, but you can't, like now the door's open, but if I was walking past it, would I necessarily know? One of the main things is how dangerous it is to that a lot of these farms are because they bypass the meter, so it's directly into the mains and it's a major fire hazard. If you live next door, you're at risk of your house going up. People don't realise that. The police here face huge obstacles, but is it any wonder with 14% fewer officers since 2010? In 2019, the force was put into special measures the first ever to be rated inadequate across all areas. Dang. And despite these measures being lifted last year, people here still have concerns. Do you feel safe now in Cleveland? Not really, no. No. 
and the police are corrupt pieces of shit. Why do you think they've had to bring the Matrix up here, man? The Matrix police have come up here. The Matrix have had to come up here because Cleveland police aren't doing the job, man. There's kids as young as 10 year old just doing little drop offs for people. It happens, there's nothing you can do about it because you're not going to catch them. And there's not much help from your local services. So the police aren't really interested, social services aren't really interested. It's for the local community. We've all stepped together to do things about it. Police don't do anything. That's why I'm being burglars seven times, nine times, you know what I mean? One of the most important no, nine times in journalism is, is to hold power to account, especially when it comes to public safety. Over the past three months, we made repeated requests to speak to Cleveland police, but the force said it was too busy, despite having spoken to several media outlets just days before we arrived. The area's police and crime commissioner did agree to an interview. Steve Turner was chosen by voters in 2021, representing the Conservative Party. He's facing another election this year and was keen to say what he's done to improve things. What I promise the people is, and they deserve an efficient and effective police force, and that's what we're building here. So we look at the crime data by percentage of population, but when you look at the arrest data by percentage of population, we're the second best force in the country for arrest data. We've got some of the best figures for arrest rates and conviction rates on crimes like shoplifting, on burglary, yeah, on knife crime. There's, and those are the, that's there's a the lot of it going on there. We've got to look at as well. It's not just about reported incidents. We can talk about knife crime going Fake on. news. He's saying what's making them look good. No, but reported incidents of knife crime go up when we increase our stop and search. And we've increased stop and search by about 40% here in Cleveland to start to bring those figures down. You've been in power for three years. Why hasn't this happened sooner? You've got to understand how low the force was when we took. We were in a position where we were only just managing to respond to crime. We had no strategy, we had no clear direction. We were a force that wasn't recording crime Facts. properly and didn't understand our demand. And we understand that now and we've managed to put the- Facts, if you legalize that class B drug, crime would definitely go down because it being illegal makes it, makes it sought after makes territories fight over it, makes people fight over corners, locations, and you know what I'm saying, like... No. The wheel's back on to this, I and agree. we've built some really solid foundations, and we're now starting to reap the benefit of that. It, what the public of Cleveland need to understand is we are not the violent place that's per perpetrated in, in some of what you see in the, in the press. Yes, the statistics are high. We are a tough place to live and work. We're a tough place to police, and there's no getting away from that, and there's a lot of work still to be done. But for the vast majority of people, they don't see crime. A lot of the crime that's reported affects a very small amount of people. So it's not always about the crime you see, it's about what the police force are doing to keep us safe in other avenues as well. Steve's naturally keen to defend his record and his hometown. Yeah. But his words don't echo what we saw and heard yeah, don't from the echo local for me community. Either. Yes, it's not everywhere, and it's worse in some places rather than others. But one way or another, criminality is visible here. Residents talk about it in a matter-of-fact way. If I was out and about on my own, I would feel <clears> sick, <throat> to be honest, because there is a lot of crime in the area. And the scars it leaves behind are even on public display. Though it's true crime is on the way down, both locally and across the country, levels in Cleveland are proving stubborn. And it's an... I feel like, why is this name Cleveland? Now, I wanted to say this at the beginning, but like I had to wait and let it play out. Any neighborhood named after an American state that has that city inside of it, Cleveland, Ohio is a like dump as well like not a, no offense to anybody in cleveland ohio in, in america but like i knew that this had no hope when they tell you cleveland i knew it was gonna be trash uphill battle for those that live here what could the police do? no offense what how do you fix this i don't know i know no no answer because you tell me what i do more than this only one thing left I do bunker, like a bump roof, nobody coming in. I've lived here all my life. I've seen it, I was brought up in it. I understand better than anybody the struggles people face here in Cleveland, and that's why I'm so passionate about doing something about it. Like the way they go about street. things is just a case, shot the money at them, that'll do. that's not the case, it's not about the money. They've got to put proper help in there, they've got to give proper support. Those who want to carry a knife, you can't stop them. They're going to carry a knife. 
The only way I sure. think that they can, anything can be done is to actually jail them. They're not, they're not getting jail time. Oh, I didn't even mute it. Why is it muted? I said that's also true. What the lady was saying, she's like, um, "We need to jail them, getting caught with a knife." I was like, "That's true," because like the 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 punishment for getting caught with a knife by police is less than getting caught without a knife by your ops. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting a slap on the wrist for taking this, for holding this knife. I'm getting, what, four years? Get out in two. Maybe get, do even less if it's my first time. Like, uh, some people, criminals and and people trying to protect themselves are willing to live with those odds. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell. Sorry for all the unnecessary accidental mutes. I don't know what I was doing, but yeah, I'm gone.